When we think of electronics, we call everything either combinational or sequential. Combinational is like a math function. You've got inputs, and those inputs generate outputs, and you get the same outputs for the same inputs. So if you have logic gates and you put in, you know, no feedback, just logic gates, whatever inputs you have are going to give certain outputs every single time. Of an NPN BJT, you'll have certain voltages on the collector and base, you have certain currents going through, certain temperature, and if all of those are the same thing, then it's going to give you the same behavior every single time. That's combinational. There's no state, there's no memory. Sequential is the opposite. Sequential is more like a computer where you have memory or, or printouts or whatever, and it goes step by step by step, and every single time you execute an instruction, it's going to depend on the state of the machine. So every single time you say add, it'll depend on what's in registers and what's in memory and whatever. So those are really the two ends of the continuum, but it is a continuum, and in the middle we have something called hysteresis. This is the kind of thing that a Schmidt trigger does. This is what I was doing with the 555 timers when I was using the Schmidt triggers. An example of something purely combinational would be an input pin on a microcontroller, CMOS or whatever. You have a voltage range where it's low every time, a voltage range where it's high every time, and a voltage range where it's indeterminate, but in reality, it's not technically indeterminate, it's just not guaranteed. It could vary from chip to chip, it could vary from day to day, but there's actually a threshold, you know, and in the middle it might wiggle back and forth because it's so close to the threshold, but fundamentally it's still combinational, exact same temperature, exact same everything, and you're going to get a point at which it reads high and a point at which it reads low, and it's purely combinational as the voltage goes up and down. The 555 timer has the threshold and trigger pins, and it uses the internal comparators to set a flip-flop, or a latch really, and that's the output. So when the voltage goes below trigger, it turns on. When it goes above threshold, it turns off. And you've got this region in the middle. It's not that it's off in the middle, it's that it has to leave this region to change. It has to go into the threshold region or into the trigger region to switch. And the effect of this is, if you have a wiggly signal in the middle, or even up here or down here, it's not going to give you a messy output. It's commonly used for switch debouncing. And this is exactly the same thing as a Schmidt trigger. People commented when I was doing this, for switch debouncing, why not just use a Schmidt trigger? And I'm like, this is a Schmidt trigger. Or they were pointing that out. But the point is, this is what a Schmidt trigger does. It's not really a chip video. I'm using the 74X14. In this case, the LS version. It's got shot key inputs or whatever it is. But it's just an inverter. It's an inverter that's got Schmidt triggers in it. There's nothing to tell you about the chip. It's in and out and the output's reversed or inverted. So the hysteresis. Imagine you had two charts. Each of these is a combinational chart. So remember, combinational, same input gives you same output no matter what. Pure combinational. So if we just look at this chart, then if the voltage is up here, we get a high, and if it's down here, we get a low. That's it. So if we just had this, then it would be a combinational thing. Here's a different one, also a combinational chart. So if you look at just this one, then if the voltage is up here, it's always a high. If it's down here, it's always a low. Taken individually, they're combinational, but they have state. There is a trigger. When the voltage is up here in this chart, it's high. It can wiggle up and down in this whole high region all at once, and it'll stay high on this chart. But as soon as it enters low, the output is going to be low because it's a combinational chart. This is where it says low. The output is low. But in this region, it triggers a change. Anytime the voltage is in this region, it triggers a change to this chart from this low region. So as soon as you enter this low region, the output is low, like it should be, like you'd expect, but now it's got a different function. It's like you had a piece of paper with math on it, and somebody's giving you, you know, here's some numbers, do the math. So you take the numbers, you do the math, and you give them the result. Next person walks up, gives you numbers, you do the math, they walk off with the result, and then your, your boss comes over, takes that sheet of paper, puts a new sheet of paper, and you're doing the exact same thing. You're taking numbers, you're doing math, and you're giving the result, but your boss keeps switching the piece of paper whenever your boss feels like it. That's what this is. Fundamentally, it's just combinational, and input equals an output based on the chart. But for certain 
situations, the chart changes. So over here, the voltage can be in this low region all at once, but as soon as it enters this high region, the output is high because that's what the chart says. When the voltage is up here, the output is high. But then you go over here and it switches charts and it's still high. You know, down here, low is low, high is high. So when the chart switches, you don't realize it switched because it'll stay what it was, but now you have a different behavior. This is what hysteresis is and this is why it's considered a combination of combinational it's a mixture of combinational and sequential, you know, partway between. If you look at the Wikipedia article on hysteresis, you'll see 800,000 different pages and charts, and oh my god. It's fun to get lost on Wikipedia, but be warned, you'll get lost. But even them, their example on their page, if you go to like electrical circuits or whatever the heading is, hysteresis and electrical circuits, it, it, it's this is Sch Schmidt trigger. That's just the example they give too. So this is, this is hysteresis. It's a fancy word with a lot going on, but if you limit yourself strictly to electric circuits, you know, not, not, not even inductors, but just like logic levels and, and analog circuits, this is what hysteresis is for simple circuits that don't involve magnetism, electricity purely. So I haven't explained anything new. It's the same thing that the 555 timer did. It's just a Schmidt trigger. The point was to explain... And I had this comment when I did the previous video. Somebody said, how could you explain this without explaining hysteresis? And I'm like, because the Wikipedia article is 800,000 pages and I'm not through figuring it out yet. <laughs> but... Like I said, it's simple if you if you narrow your focus. But let me just show you this chip real quick. One thing to point out is it is a BJT-based chip in the TTL family. The TTL voltage goes from 0 to 2. And it works just fine. The, the recommended voltage is 5, and it goes up to 7. But the point is that it's based on a range of voltages that goes from 0 to 2, and it'll work fine with bigger voltages, but it's going to be way imbalanced. So from 2 to 5 is just going to be locked high, which is one reason I prefer the 555 timer to a Schmidt trigger chip, because the timer is configurable. I can set the voltages to whatever I want. And if you use your own comparators, you could, you could build it out of comparators. I'll do a video at some point on making your own 555 timer with parts, just for fun. It's actually pretty simple, but it's configurable. But if you get the right chip, then there you go. It's a super simple demonstration. I've got my left power supply giving me 5 volts to feed the power. The right power supply is going to give me my signal. And I've got just one pin of the chip hooked up, well, one input-output of the chip hooked up to an LED with a transistor, of course, because the chip ain't going to drive an LED. So it'll show whether the chip is putting out a high or a low. And this multimeter is going to show you the signal voltage because I'm probably going to block this with my arm. So right now the output is high because it's an inverter. And if I start wiggling the voltage, you can see nothing's happening. Going higher and higher, nothing's happening. So if I turn it up just until the output switches, 1.8 volts. Remember how I said it's TTL and based on 2? So if I turn it up all the way to 5, of course nothing happens. And now it switched at 1.8, but if I turn it down to 1.7, 1.6, 1.5, it stays low. In inverter, so logically it's high, but it's inverting, so it's low. How low do I have to turn it to make it go back on 0.7? And then I go above 0.7 point to 1.3, 1.5. So this is just working exactly as the 555 timer is. It's a Schmidt trigger. So we have to go up to about 1.8 before it switches, and then to down to about 0.7 until it switches. So it's a perfect switch debouncer for two volts. I suppose you could voltage divide your signal from five to two volts or from whatever to two volts, and it would work with this, or maybe your switch doesn't bounce too bad and this will be all right. It just depends on your situation. But I'm sure that an actual CMOS chip, something perhaps in the 4000 line, because this is the 74 line, which is TTO, something based on CMOS technology with MOSFETs might be better designed for switch debouncing at five volts, or more generally the supply. That's it. I just wanted to teach you a fancy word today. It's one of those words that's useful for communication when you're in the field because you say hysteresis and everybody immediately gets it. But if you have to explain what hysteresis is, it's simpler to just explain it in the first place. It's like when you see an acronym and then right next to the acronym it's spelled out. If you never use the acronym again, then what was the point? So while you RSVP, respondez s'il vous plaît, I'll be seeing you.